uh, video audio might be a little messed up on this video, but I, I, wow, that's, that's incredibly surprising because I actually came up with that same hypothesis about, about three, four years ago. Cause I was like, me and my uh, roommate were having this discussion about, uh, you know, dogs and how humans were, you know, how humans would hunt so on and so forth and kill animals. And then there was like a dog like, uh, animal that used to follow them and eat the remains of the animal after the humans, you know, moved on. And then the dog animal sort of became to see the humans as a food source. And when that happened, the dogs actually came to the point to which they would follow the humans and they would see the humans as a food source. And after they saw them as a food source, if any other animal or anything came over, the dog would either attack it or bark to let them know that the area to which the humans are in was protected. I'm not sure if it's true because that I heard that from word of mouth. I had never done any research on it, but I do think the idea and the understanding that people understand, like dogs, like most animals only interact with their species, not with humans though, but with humans and dogs. It was a symbiotic relationship. It was two animals, and I think the conscious understanding of seeing another animal to which could be related or re-related back to another species besides, you know, food, you know, like food. It was more like, you know, I, I can't even imagine how it was like for the first humans to try to understand, like, we're an animal, but that's another animal, and that other animal is very much so helping us, you know? It's, it, it must have been like a reawakening of the other understanding. And I've actually done a lot of uh, hypotheses about dogs and the connection between dogs and humans, because I think dogs are very much so socially like us. Like, you can tell if a dog is angry, if it's anxious. Like, dogs express their emotion. And actually, dogs do grow off of people's emotions. Dogs can sense certain emotions. So dogs actually evolve through people. At least that's my perspective on the issue. Because, like, you know, if you're angry, so on and so forth, the dog, the dog senses that. So dogs can actually understand human emotion. And, like, we breed dogs, humans get bred. You know, I, I came up with a, a statement when I was, like, in middle school because I, I spent a lot of time, you know, wondering, like, are we animals first or humans? You know, what what are we? Are we more animal-like or are we more human-like? And I came to the conclusion that we are, at every single instance, animals first and humans second. But if we can understand our animalistic nature and the animal to which is within us and actually acknowledge the animal, then we get onto the human stage. Because if we can, because every jerk reaction, we're mostly working on like a lower level of thought. You know, most people get up to work, they hear their alarm, they get up, they're not thinking like, you know, it's either like, you know, I don't want to get up, hit the snooze button. Most people don't think, you know, I'm going to get up and then reset my clock earlier, you know, so, so next time, the next day, you know, they don't, they don't have that jerk reaction when they first wake up. Maybe after a good amount of thought on the whole issue, they may set their alarm earlier or their clock earlier to get to bed earlier, so on and so forth. But that, that general thought process, the human thought process, at least in my perception, only comes about after we understand our tendencies and our nature. And dogs, ah, I can't believe you brought up dogs. Because I think dogs is, dogs, I think socially, we are very much so similar. Like, we are similar on so many basic, basic levels. It's just because of the fact that, you know, they're completely covered in fur to walk on all fours that we have this disconnection between the two but um the main thing i think about dogs um I, you know the saying like a dog is a man's best friend i realize why that is true it's not because it's because of the fact that if you feed a dog if you give a dog water that dog will follow you wherever you go it will be your best friend and i think in at least the male perspective what we look for most out of anything else is loyalty loyalty is something that as human males, I think we're constantly looking for that. Like, is this person loyal to me? And once you get, you can actually groom a person to be like a dog, to be completely loyal. Hitler's like number two guy killed his family, his uh, wife, and I think his children because of the fact Hitler told him to. It's that loyalty to which we're really looking to see. We want to see loyalty because we all know our thought process. And even if you're not like upfront about it, we, we're constantly thinking like, you know, I don't want to screw this guy over, but I could screw him over. Like, you know. I, I can screw him over here, you know, you'd be a little truffle, I can screw him over here and here. 
that whole understanding comes about because of the fact that we understand ourselves. And because we understand ourselves, it's hard to have this sense of loyalty. But with dogs, you don't have that. You're not going to think like, you know, if I, if I, you know, if I feed this dog, you know, so on and so forth, I will give it water, so on and so forth. You don't expect like a dog that you've had for two to three years of love you, so on and so forth, to one day attack you because of the fact that you understand the loyalty and the loyalty is there with dogs. So I think it gives the least on the male side of it a sense of connection, like ultimate loyalty, the fact that, yeah, I'm here and this dog is here and the dog loves me. And then you, know, you give him a name because of the fact that that loyalty, you have that deep, deep connection. And I think that is very much so a deep connection. Um, yeah, so a dog is a man's best friend in that sense. I, I, I still can't believe you brought up that point because I've not heard anybody try to actually come up with a connection between, you know, humans and dogs besides me. And I don't really talk about this with too many people because, you know, most of my friends are more interested in about, but, well, I'm, I'm really interested in drinking and stuff like that, but still, you know, I don't have conversations like this with most of my homies, but, uh, yeah, no, nah, it's a very interesting point that people would think that the rapture is going to come on May 21st, I don't know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what to say, I had a few thoughts about it, but I, I guess I just want to talk about the dog issue because that's, I, I came to a grip of understanding, just analyzing dogs and cats and the societal, social, The overall societal connection to the social animals were just, ah, forget it. I, I could have came up with an actual complete thought that was detailed, but I'm, I don't feel like trying right now. Anyways, great video. I only watched half of it. I just wanted to hit on the that point before, like, I lost all my, lost my train of thought. But, uh, yeah, good video, and, uh, yeah, very interesting. I, I, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The, the, the fact that, you know, as humans we see dogs and then we see a higher power, it's very interesting. I mean, he Humans have always believed, uh, for a long time, like even before we had writing, humans believed in a higher power. That's why we buried our dead. We had rituals, so on and so forth. So, I mean, humans have always been odd in a certain sense, and it's sort of the animal kingdom, I think. I could be wrong, though. Animals could have other rituals about, you know, their dead, so on and so forth. I mean, I guess I guess a mother saying a dead, you know, like a, like a... Uh, a baby that dies young, you know, for a mother, you know, like a mother cat or anything, there's a, you know, there, I, there's probably grieving process. It's a hard understanding to see like a child dead. So there's probably some cultural aspects within the animal kingdom. It's just that as humans, we kind of see ourselves like a superior being. So it's kind of hard for us to detach ourselves from the fact that we're, you know, human, quote unquote, and look at the animal kingdom as a relationship to the human kingdom. Because stuff is, it really is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities that we overlook because of the fact that we kind of have this sense of superiority. And I think that that has a lot of problems within uh, the, the development of human understanding. I was going to write a paper on this whole issue, but a uh, computer got broken. I lost like, you know, 14 pages on the issue. But I'm thinking about starting it up again. But uh, yeah, yeah, good video. Peace out. Jesus.